السلام عليكم اليوم محاضرتنا راح تكون about the intracranial hemorrhage the intracranial hemorrhage is the one of the emergency object in this lecture we know how we can diagnose the intracranial hemorrhage radiologically radiologically how we can diagnose and what's the type of intracranial hemorrhage bismillah somebody The intracranial hemorrhage divided according to location intracranial cavity into in extraaxial and intraaxial. Extraaxial hemorrhage meaning the hemorrhage is outside the brain parenchyma, outside the brain. So the hemorrhage is located between the bone, cranial bone, and the brain, in the space between the cranial bone and the brain. Intraaxial meaning the hemorrhage inside the brain. brain itself inside the brain itself that's mean extraaxial and intraaxial we have three types of extraaxial hemorrhage according to location extradural hemorrhage which hemorrhage occurring into the outside the dura between the bone and the dura subdural hemorrhage the hemorrhage locating under the dura into the dural space under the dura in the dural space Third, subdural hemorrhage, meaning the hemorrhage occurring under the arachnoid, sorry, subarachnoid, subarachnoid under the arachnoid. It's occurring into the arachnoid space. So we have three types of hemorrhage, extradural, meaning outside the dura, subdural, meaning in the dural space, subarachnoid, meaning it's in the arachnoid space. Intraaxial hemorrhage have two types, intracerebral and intraventricular intracerebral meaning the hemorrhage inside the brain itself so it can be in basal ganglia lobar pontine cerebellar wherever in the brain it's called intracerebral hemorrhage intraventricular meaning the hemorrhage inside the ventricle hemorrhage inside the ventricle so we have two types of intraaxial intracerebral and intraventricular i know this is the graph showing the shape of intracranial hemorrhage each type of intracranial hemorrhage have the fixed shape why because it's occurring inside the fixed space do you understand what i mean i mean the hemorrhage intracranially occurring in the fixed space so this hemorrhage take the shape of this space look for this grapher Extradural space is half biconvex or lenticular shape. This is the fix. It's biconvex or lenticular. When see the hemorrhage shape, when see the hemorrhage lenticular shape, it's extradural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage, it's a crescent shape, crescent shape. So we when see the hemorrhage crescent, it's the subdural hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage, it's gyri form. is taking the shape of the gyri and cistern where the hemorrhage is seeding. So it's gyriform. For when the hemorrhage is taking the shape of gyriform or is seen in the cistern, it's subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, intracerebral hemorrhage, there is no fixed space because it's bleeding, seeding in the ventricle. So it can be rounded, oval shape. Mostly it's rounded and oval shape. Intraventricular hemorrhage, taking the shape of the ventricle. Taking the shape of the ventricle. Looking in the lateral, is taking the shape of lateral ventricle. Third, taking the shape of the third ventricle. So each type of hemorrhage is have the fixed shape. Now, radiological features or how we can diagnose the hemorrhage radiologically. First, the CT scan is the golden method for the diagnosis of intracranial hemorrhage. The CT scan is golden method for diagnosis of intracranial hemorrhage. Why? Because the acute intracranial hemorrhage appearing as hyperdense area in comparing with the brain parenchyma. Okay? So the CT scan is the first idea for the diagnosis in patients suspected of intracranial hemorrhage. Okay, although in the 
area of hyperdensity depended on the amount of blood. When there is a large hemorrhage, there is a large area of hyperdense. When there is small hemorrhage, there is small area of hyperdense. But the hyperdensity, it's obviously to diagnosis. Hyperdense meaning is more bright, appearing as area more brightness than the adjacent brain parenchyma. So it's easy to diagnose it because it's more brightness. It's a bright area. So it's easy to diagnose it. Extradural hemorrhage. The extradural hemorrhage, it's a traumatic hemorrhage. Traumatic hemorrhage meaning the main causes of extradural hemorrhage is trauma. And also it's major trauma and big trauma. The patient have history of big trauma, like road traffic accident, okay, fall from height. It's have a big history of major trauma. And always is associated with a fracture of adjacent bone. And this type of hemorrhage is arterial, arterial type of hemorrhage. This is the shape of extradural hemorrhage. And now, how we can read this image? This is the CT scan. First of all, the name of image. The name of image is CT scan, axial view of the brain. And now, how we can describe this lesion? This is the hyperdense, biconvex area is seen in left temporal region associated with compression of adjacent brain and ipsilateral ventricle. The diagnosis is acute, acute extradural hemorrhage. So this is the shape of extradural, it has biconvexity, the outer convex for the bone, the inner convex for the dura, and the effect of it is causing compression or mass effect upon adjacent ventricle and ipsilateral ventricle, adjacent brain tissue, sorry, and ipsilateral ventricle. This is acute extradural hemorrhage. Now, subdural hemorrhage also traumatic hemorrhage, but it's causing due to minor trauma and it's venous type, also occurring in two extremities of age, in old age and infant. The patient giving the history of minor trauma, like the shaking infant, or the patient have epilepsy on one of the feet causing the subdural hemorrhage, small trauma. In old age, like fainting attack, okay, this is history of minor trauma causing this type of hemorrhage, and this type of hemorrhage is venous type. Now, this is the picture showing the subdural hemorrhage. Axial CT scan of brain showing crescent shape, hyperdense area is seen in lateral parietal region, associated with compression, adjacent parenchyma, and shifted epsilateral ventricle to the opposite side. As we can see here, there is a facial sign. A facial sign meaning there is a swelling of a brain. As we can see, obviously, on the left side, the sulci is obvious. Falling with the CSF fluid is appearing hyperdense. While in the right side, there is a face absent of the sulci. This is the effect of trauma in the brain, causing compression and a face of the sulci. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. This is the hemorrhage occurring due to rupture of intracranial aneurysm or head trauma. And this hemorrhage occurring in the arachnoid space. This space is hairline space surrounding the ventricle and falling with the CSF. So this type of the hemorrhage is difficult type to the diagnosis because it's appearing just hairline, hyperdense area, gyri form surrounding the brain surrounding the brain but the more common site we can easy diagnosis of subarachnoid when it's collection in the basal cisterna this is the basal cisterna the subarachnoid hemorrhage collection around the circle of the willis in the basal cisterna as we can see there's the spider shape hyperdense area surrounding the vessels of the circle of willis both mid cerebral artery and anterior cerebral and both posterior cerebral arteries. This is the basal cistern and this is the subarachnoid. This type of hemorrhage don't cause in compression. Why? Because it's seeding around the brain. It's seeding in the brain cavity. Causes of it mostly rupture microaneurysm or the patient have history of trauma. Intracerebral hemorrhage. The intracerebral hemorrhage is a spontaneous type of the hemorrhage occur in old age group or middle age group. But 
this is the middle age or old age have a previous history of medical disease like uncontrolled hypertension with atheroma or the patient have bleeding tendency taking anticoagulant blood for this is the causes of it it's ruptured small intracerebral arteries if the patient have don't any medical previous medical history and have spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage so the causes of it is rupture microaneurysm or rupture AV malformation. And this is the occur mostly in middle age. Rupture microaneurysm or rupture AV malformation. Other causes is trauma. The trauma, major trauma, can cause lacerated of brain, can cause intracerebral hemorrhage. Intracerebral hemorrhage. This is the CT scan of a brain showing rounded, well-defined hypertense hematoma is seen into the left parietofrontal region, causing severe compression adjacent to the ipsilateral ventricle and brain. And in this type of hemorrhage, as we can see, there's a hypodense rim, rim of hypodensity surrounded the hematoma. This is the rim is edema. This is the rim is edema. The edema is only seen when the lesion occurring intraaxial inside the brain. As we can see, in all these three types of hemorrhage, there's also only compression on the brain, only causing mass effects on the brain, but there's no brain edema. While intracerebral hemorrhage causing the brain edema, brain edema. So any lesion, it's intraaxial, it will be causing brain edema, which is appearing as the hypodense rim surrounding the lesion as we can see here there is a hypodense obviously hypodense rim surrounding the hyperdense hematoma this is acute intracerebral hemorrhage acute intracerebral hemorrhage intraventricular hemorrhage this type of hemorrhage is occurring secondary to intracerebral or subarachnoid meaning that when the patient have intracerebral hemorrhage the hemorrhage can be seeding inside the ventricle or can seeding to arachnoid space. So we, when we see the intraventricular hemorrhage, we're looking for the primary causes, which is either intracerebral or subarachnoid. This is the axial CT scan showing there is a hyperdense hematoma filling both lateral ventricle and third ventricle. This is the acute intraventricular hemorrhage. Acute intraventricular hemorrhage, okay? Acute intraventricular hemorrhage. With best regard. Thank you for your patience. Thanks.